Uh, welcome to this session on future of intelligent cluster operations. Uh, can I get a show of hands of how many people made it to the keynotes this morning? OK, so all of you all almost know, have heard already about AI. So welcome to yet another talk about AI. Um, since we're going to talk about cluster operations, uh, let's start with the life of a Kubernetes engineer. But uh, before that, uh, I'm Rajas. Uh, I work at VMware at Broadcom. Uh, I'm also involved in the CNCF Technical Advisory Group Runtime, uh, most specifically the working group around artificial intelligence in CNCF, as well as the working groups around WASM and things like that. And I have Amin with me here. Yeah. Hi, folks. Uh, my name is Amin. I'm part of the AWS EKS team. I mostly work on controllers and uh, recently uh, LLM Nitties. So yeah, pretty excited to, to do this. That's good. Next slide. All right, so life of a Kubernetes engineer. So this is mostly what the life of a Kubernetes engineer looks like. Most of the times we're on on calls. Um, and then we'll walk, walk you through some of the other scenarios that we go through. Uh, so this is this is what happens. Like you know, you're good at deploying clusters. You're all happy. You go watch a movie, and then you find out that a cluster cluster upgrade failed. <laughs> Once the upgrade fails, then you figure out that the uh, APIs that were there were deprecated, and then eventually you have to restore the backup from etcd. <laughs> uh, legend says that this is also a screenshot of someone who upgraded to 124 and didn't keep in mind the Docker shim was removed and thoughts and prayers with them right now. <laughs> uh, the other scenario that we mostly face is when we, we've added all of the features, we're doing good, the stock's going up of our product, and then we find CVEs <laughs> which we didn't resolve and have like you know <laughs> led to the stock tanking. Uh, so the point we're trying to make over here is Kubernetes has become boring, yet there are problems which uh, are pain points. Uh, in, in this screenshot, we can see that Reddit got down because of a Kubernetes cluster upgrade. Um, upgrading Kubernetes clusters is not very easy or very seamless as of now because of multiple other reasons. Um, similarly, uh, CVE scannings, upgrading, uh, bumping dependencies is also not very seamless. So all in all, Debugging clusters when something goes down <laughs> is still a pain point. <laughs> uh, what we're trying to focus on over here is how AI can help you. Uh, a shout out to Kate's GPT that recently got into CNCF Sandbox. So this is like a step in the right direction, wherein we, we, we're trying to see how we can get AI to make Kubernetes better or just cluster operations better. What we're going to talk about right now is something where we are <laughs> embedding LLMs as uh, backed by Kubernetes controllers. And we're going to see what that looks like. So it's LLMs, Kubernetes controllers, and the cool kids these days are calling it LLM Netties. Uh, so it's, it's a con conceptual walkthrough of what LLM Netties is, uh, what controllers backed by LLMs look like, and uh, how, the, how the journey has been. So um, before getting started, um, everything in Kubernetes is a controller, from namespaces to pods to deployments. And LLM Netties is no exception. It's just another controller you install in your cluster. You're going to feed a few CRDs, and it's going to do a bunch of actions in, in the cluster. Um, so basically, LLM Netties is going to interact with an LLM endpoint. It could be OpenAI, Cloud Tree. It could be a local LLM. Um, it's going to fetch some information from those models and apply those back to the cluster. For example, like, hey, how can I create a pod? Or how can I create a load balancer? Or how can I destroy my cluster? Um, we're going to jump real quick to a demo. And just a disclaimer, what's happening here is live. So whatever the LLM gives us back um, is going to be applied directly to the cluster. And if something doesn't work, it's um, very likely because LLMs are not deterministic. Or sometimes they can do way more than uh, you ask them to do. We're also calling them Schrodinger's demos right now. They may or may not work. <laughs> so let's see how it goes. Let the demo gods be with us. Um, so just one quick note. 
Uh, last KubeCon in Chicago, Rajas and I presented the same topic, LLMDTs, and we started with this concept called command exec. So instead of really giving a deployment spec, you can say like, hey, create three Nginx pods and expose them maybe uh, with a load balancer on port 80. Today, we have more CRDs. We have what we call cluster audits. For example, you can ask the controller to scan the images and tell you what's wrong with the pods and the deployments, for example. You could also ask LLM Netis to break the load balances. Uh, you don't specify if it should really delete them or update the spec, but it can break them um, in a way or another. So yeah, that screenshot, just in case the LLM doesn't work, uh, we're going to show it. But now we're going to do the demo. Is the font size OK? Maybe bigger? Is this good? OK. Sweet. All right, so um, we have a bunch of examples in here. Um, we have a controller running locally against a kind cluster. So if you do uh, cluster info, I have my cluster running. And I can show, for example, um, the command exec. Um, um, so this command exec can deploy a cron job that will delete a pod randomly every two hours. It sounds like a chaos uh, engineering task. So with time, Rajas and I decided to make this what we call um, a chaos simulation CRD. And that became, um, for example, in here, a chaos simulation. Basically, you do nothing. You just give a CRD called chaos simulation, and the LLM is going to decide what to do with it. Um, all right. So. Without any other um, comments on this, I'm just going to go and apply the command exec to show, or and also like pray that it's going to work. Sometimes it doesn't. All right. So we asked the command exec to create a cron job that will delete pods randomly in the cluster every two hours. And you can see in the status of the CRD that the command was processed successfully. And it was executed successfully as well. You can see like the, the YAML file that was applied to the cluster. Um, it says there's a cron job, v1 beta 1, which I believe is deprecated in 1.29. So this one is not going to work. <laughs> Um, and you can see this, um, I'm not a cron job expert, but it should be like maybe every 30 minutes or two hours. And if I do, no, actually, um, we have some replacements. So we changed the V1 beta 1 to, to V1, and you can see that we have a cron job in the cluster running right now, trying to delete pods randomly in the, um, in the default namespace. Um, another example we can show today is um, CV scanning, for example. So uh, we can see here. Um, we're going to scan all the images of the uh, pods and deployments running in the cluster, and then we're going to return um, what are the CVEs that were detected and what can we do, what's, what kind of actions we can take to, to address those. Uh, before I'm going to show that I have a tiny pod running in here. Um, so if I do, yeah, it's not an Nginx, it's just named Nginx, but if I do get pods, um, we have an S3 controller running in the cluster, and it's not working. I mean, it's in crash loop back off, but we're going to run a scan um, CVE on this one. All right, let's follow this. It's going to take some time for the LLM to respond. And I think also we're doing tri V behind the scenes. So we're calling a binary to scan the images and then call some APIs and LLMs to get some answers. It's a little bit slow. 
or maybe it crashed. <laughs> History says that demos never really work uh, live. Uh, but the point that we're trying to make over here is how uh, we, uh, we we auditing the cluster, we auditing all of the images of the cluster. We're trying to see, uh, we're passing uh, that spec to Trivi and seeing what all are the images which are being uh, having c uh, CVEs which are to be addressed, and then hitting the LLM API at the back end, which is telling us what are the next steps that we have to do. So that was the output that we were expecting over here, wherein the, uh, the, uh, the LLM endpoint would tell us, hey, these are the CVEs addressed in your image. Uh, these are the next steps. These are the dependencies that you got to bump. And then this is how it would be addressed. That re not really, really worked right now. But that was the point that we were trying to put across. OK, now we, we have yet another crisis to solve where <laughs> the HDMI has gone down. Oh, by the way, this is how I talked about life of Kubernetes engineer in the beginning. This is what life of Kubernetes engineer at KubeCon looks like. <laughs> oh, it's back up, okay. I guess. Okay, Sweet. cool. So the um, CV is scanning finished, and apparently uh, it cannot connect to, to ECR. Oh, God. Okay, let's, let's give it one last try. It's always credentials. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we're trying again. We're trying CV scanning again. All right. Actually, should be. Okay, so we got the controller running. Now we're going to apply the cluster audit CV YAML. We got that in. Now we just wait. <laughs> <laughs> but this time should be faster because the image, I think, is cached. Um, oh, okay, okay, sweet. So, yeah. So this is what it looks like, right? Like, look at the output over here that we're trying to focus, wherein it says CV so and so was with a particular vulnerability around it, the package that it was associated with, what version was installed, and then the actions to take. So it's not just telling you what went wrong with your cluster, but also tells you what to take, uh, what, what next step to take. Sweet. Um, in this case, it was like Golang uh, network library. This was a pretty recent CV, I think in December. So uh, if you haven't updated your libraries, please do. Um, the yeah. last example. Yeah, yeah and, and the, the point is, this is how LLMs at the back end of your Kubernetes controllers can actually help you drive your cluster operations. CVs is just an example, right? Like CV scanning, the upgrades, and so on and so forth. Another quick example we have is uh, audit and storage. Uh, for example, you can look at um, uh, the PVCs and uh, PVs and see what's wrong with them. Like we know a lot of, in a lot of cases, like users try to deploy storage solutions and they don't know what's really happening. So we developed this plugin that is going to go and scan your PVCs and uh, tell you what's what really, um, what's wrong with them what could, what, or what could be the, um, the problem. So um, I have a, I think a pending VPC in here, yeah, uh, sorry, uh, PVC. And it can tell you like there is a problem with the foo PVC uh, cell pending phase and it's gonna like um, suggest some of the uh, things you should be able to do. And then the more information you give it about, about the provider, the more it's gonna give you more tricks and hints on, on how to address this. Um, we have two more things to show. So before we get into the voice to chat or like talking to the cluster, we're going to show um, the chaos simulation. So this one is the empty CRD, let's say, or like the empty spec. We're going to apply this chaos simulation. And basically, the, the, we, we didn't instruct the controller to do anything in here. We're just like, hey, just simulate some chaos in the cluster. 
And we're going to see what kind of action the um, the uh, controller will, will will do in here. All right. It's always a cron job that someone starts with. Uh, so here it's trying to delete parts, right? Yes. So sometimes it goes for services, sometimes for pods, uh, sometimes for both. But today it shows um, the pods. Yeah. So, so this is an example of a cluster chaos simulation, wherein you can talk to the cluster in all of these examples in plain English. You talk to the cluster to scan for your CVs in English. You talk to your cluster in plain English for your pers persistent volume claims. You talk to your cluster in plain English for simulating chaos. And then with the help of an LLM, it generates the Kubernetes configuration which is required to do the required action. So the thing to note over here is that the, uh, the controller also has right access to your cluster. So in case things go, uh, go wrong, you and only you are responsible for this. Sweet. Um, we can go to the next one. I think this is the trickiest part of all the demo. Like It works maybe 20% of the chances. But basically, we're going to try to talk to the cluster and be like, hey, can I upgrade to the next version uh, without really giving it a lot of information. Um, so in this case, we have a, a tiny binary that's going to help us take the voice, uh, transcribe it to um, a LLMNETES uh, resource, and apply it to the cluster. All right, I'm going to start here. So can I upgrade to the next version? All right, we can see that we have a cluster audit um, of type cluster upgrade. And if I do cluster audit in here, um, no, you can never upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> so, can you highlight this text, the output? Yeah. So this is the output of the LLM. And what we did behind the scenes is that we queried all the available resources in the cluster. And then we fed it some information about the deprecated APIs. And we're like, hey, can I really upgrade? The thing is that this is a false information. You can upgrade, actually, most of the times very easily from 27 to 28, because there is not a lot of upgrade uh, deprecated APIs. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, cron job, maybe? I think that was 25. 25, OK. Yeah. Um, I think 27 to 28 is, is one of the safest. But clearly, like the LLM in here is trying to be careful and telling you, no, actually, you should go and check more, which is correct. Actually, if you think about it, you should also check the CRDs. Because here, we're only checking the native resources, like pods, cron jobs, and, and all those things. So the, the point is, you can talk, not only write plain English to your uh, Kubernetes cluster, but also talk to it in plain English and then get a response from it, which is basically guiding you for your cluster operations. This one, this one was like the hardest to get, because it's about upgrades. Upgrades are not safe. Upgrades are not easy. But again, we're not relying on the LLM to do upgrades uh, on its own, but also taking it as an assistance to do upgrades. Sweet. So we don't have to show the screenshots, because I think most of the things are almost. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so in this case, the chaos um, CRD is deleting randomly either pods or services, or I think, no, deleting services randomly. Um, you can see here like the random uh, for the service array. And for this one, we had the cluster upgrade check. Um, so yesterday, it said yes. Today, it said no. So it's un unpredictable. Well, that brings us to the next question, or one of the most important questions. Like, hey, uh, when you ask an LLM can I upgrade to the next uh, version, what is really happening in its mind? It is really in this situation. Should I say yes or should I say no? And what we've learned um, while building this prototype is machine learning models without classifiers are just probabilities. And we cannot rely on probabilities to do things like cluster upgrades. Um, LLMs, they are not deterministic. I've heard that some people can make them deterministic. Uh, but the ones that we're using here, the local ones and OpenAI uh, API, they are not. So every time you, you run the same request, you get a different answer. Ideal upgrades, or if you want to upgrade your cluster, you're looking for precise data. You're looking for 
an exact answer. You cannot really afford mistakes. And the problem with LLMs or machine learning models is about probabilities, and you cannot afford uh, making mistakes in this. You can upgrade to the next version and everything goes down. So our learning from this uh, prototype is that you sh we should avoid asking LLMs to um, give uh, insights or advice on tasks that need precise data. especially when filing taxes, unless if you want to get a call from the IRS. Um, imagine like asking an LLM to file taxes for you. That's, that's crazy. So um, beside that, really, really like quick, quick plot twist. Um, if, I, if you wanted to do a cluster upgrade for real, you need to pass the audit logs. That's the best way we have so far. Um, you can check who's calling what, who's calling the deprecated API. And uh, you need to scan the real cluster re resources, not only the native ones. So the CRDs uh, give the real change log, get the change log, change it to a JSON or to a YAML file, and then feed that to a deterministic system that is not an LLM. Ideally, that's what you need um, to, per to perform a cluster upgrade check. Uh, so, so that brings us to the questions wherein we actually uh, planning on doing something where the LLM doesn't know what your what the data uh, is about. Like you're planning on upgrading to 129. Well, does it know about deprecated APIs? Things like that. So I, I, I would just like to take a uh, pulse around, like from the audience. Like if you were to talk to a cluster and ask any questions for any particular cluster operations, what would that be? Like any show of hands, any call outs, any shout outs? Yeah, I see one over there. So operator, operator vulnerability upgrades is what I hear. Yeah. Sounds good. Anything else? Resource consumption. Resource consumption. Thank you. Anything else? Any show of hands, any call outs, any shout outs? All right. OK, so uh, this, is, this is great. Like, thanks for your inputs, right? Uh, so the point I'm trying to make over here is everyone's cluster operations will be different. Every use case will be different. Every task will be different. And the LLM may not be able to serve you for every generalized task, or may be able to serve you for a generalized task, but it may not be accurate. So that's, that's where we want to draw, to your, uh, draw everyone towards the concept of local LLM, wherein we don't want to uh, force an endpoint of an LLM, but also encourage cloud native engineers, all of us, to adopt the art of training LLMs, fine tuning LLMs for your needs on how it looks like. So, so uh, what we're going to focus on is the green box over here. This, this is the LLM that is conceptual diagram that we talked about a while ago. Now we're going to focus on the green box over here. So moving on, um, uh, this is what maybe a local LLM looks like. You have a data set, and in this case, it, may, it can be like a cube serial data set. And you have a pre-trained model. A pre-trained model can be uh, a llama, uh, yeah, so this is, this, is, this, is, this is what your data set looks like. If you move to the next slide, thank you. Uh, a pre-trained model can be a Llama, a Mistral, Pythia, anything of that sort, right? An openly available model. Um, you take that model, you take your data set, and pass it through something called as Exordital, wherein you fine tune that model for your particular need. In this case, it's a kubectl data set, wherein it's having English for kubectl commands. That's it. Um, Exolital is a project in Open Access AI Collective, which helps you fine tune models. Uh, and we have done an extensive talk, uh, the talk that uh, Amin called out earlier in the talk, uh, earlier in this session, uh, refers to cluster operations as a service that we talked about in Chicago at Cloud Native uh, Kubernetes AI Day, uh, wherein we actually talk about how, what it means to fine tune a model, what it means to take a data set, uh, pass it through a model, and actually uh, run inference on it. All right, so now you've taken the data set, you have a model, you have fine-tuned it, you, you have your new, newly shiny fine-tuned model available over here in blue. This model can eventually be, at, at, uh, at the heart of it, maybe a PyTorch framework or a TensorFlow framework. It, it depends on what uh, the model, the, what the pre-trained model was trained on. So to really embed this model in your controller, you need something called as a unified abstraction layer, which Onyx offers you, which is a machine learning or a deep learning platform 
framework independent uh, format which you can uh, uh, through which you can transfer weights right like you can you can convert your pytorch model to an onyx model you can convert your tensorflow model to an onyx model and then run inference on it so this is this is the onyx model which eventually gets uh, embedded into your local llm which you can use so for any uh, use case of resource uh, utilization that you mentioned about right like you can actually train your local llm for this particular use case or some operator vulnerability use case you can train your local llm for this the demo that we showed up showed you was uh, a framework how you can embed all of these things in your cluster but at the heart of it, you can get your own model. You can get your own LLM to the table. Uh, the tricky part, uh, if you go to the uh, slide before this, the tricky part over here is your LLM may not give you the accurate data every time. So in that case, you whatever data it spits out, and if it's inaccurate, you actually tell the LLM that it's inaccurate. You help the LLM learn it. And that is when you pass all of those validation test cases which fail back to your data set over here in blue that, that we've shown. And then cool kids call all of this as MLOps, right? So this, this is another concept that we wanted to talk about and really focus on. We tried to do a demo of Onyx in a local model, and this is what a computer looked like when we tried it to run it on a local computer and not on a cloud computer. <laughs> um, Funny story, um, we wanted to prepare a demo for this. Rajas sent me the weights maybe two, like Six. four days ago, something like that. And he was like, hey, they're on, um, on the drive. Go and pick them up and run the Onyx. And I was like, yeah, I'll do it for sure. And I r execute the model. And maybe two minutes after, my laptop is frozen. It cannot really function. And I was like, hmm, interesting. And then I remember that the weights were like 60 gigabytes. So I was trying to load 60 gigabytes of, of weights in memory. But another interesting thing is that everything went to the swap, right? It still like slowed the laptop a lot. Yeah. So the point is, we're still working on this. So if you happen to be at Salt Lake City, chances are we may get local elements working over there. So stay tuned. <laughs> OK. With great power comes great responsibility. We've heard it a ton of times. But what next? Like, what are we actually talking about, right? Uh, next slide. Uh, we're talking about how Responsible AI is the need of the R. Just explainability is not enough. Telling what your cluster does is not enough. But what to do next in order to fix your cluster is the need of the R. Like that is what we need to focus on. We need to focus on training our models, embedding them into Kubernetes controllers, so that we can get actionable uh, outcomes, like the next steps to look forward to. The other thing is, you can't rely on your LLM completely. You give admin access to your LLM, and it, tries to, it tells you to <laughs> delete all of the pods or delete of the namespaces. That's not really going to work out. So you should be able to disagree with the outcome of your LLM. And as a human, that's not enough. You should be able to embed that in the tool that you bring. So the ability of disagreeing with the output of your LLM model and then embedding that in the tool is again something that leads us to responsible AI. So to, to basically uh, cover all of these topics, uh, we, 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 we're coming towards how we can have control over the data, the model execution, and then also think about security. Right now, we're taking one data, we're taking one LLM, then passing it through multiple filters, and then running it. We just can't run something like that in production. We need software supply uh, principles. We need attestation. We need uh, SHAs to validate that this data set came at this particular SHA, this model was at this particular SHA. So I'm basically talking about how we can cloud native wise the artifacts of AI. <laughs> and all in all, LLM NetEase is just a vehicle. It just uh, gives you a tool, the vehicle that def that basically makes sure that you define the path where you want to go with your use case. How you, what are the problems that you're going to solve? How, how accurate you want the outcome to be? 
how how much of an impact the outcome uh, weighs on your particular problem. So LLM Netties doesn't solve all of your problems. LLMs don't solve all of your problems. But this is a framework that you can embed. You can bring your own LLMs and then uh, try to uh, have nuanced use cases. Add, add much more validation test cases, add, uh, add much, much more testing, and then holistically solve your problem. So LLMs, LLM Netties, AI is more of an auxiliary, more of a tool that helps you. Uh, but at the end of the day, you need humans to testify against all of these outcomes. Next steps. So uh, what do we want to build next? Uh, we wanted to do this, this talk, but it was too much, like it was too big of a task. But our next goal is to have one LLM and basically embed two personas in it, where like one is trying to fix the cluster and the other one is trying to, to destroy it. And what we want to do is like, hey, we have data. We can like have two LLMs action, take action on the cluster, break it, and then try to fix it, log all those actions, and then try to uh, feed that data to the LLMs, like try to um, increase the learning of those LLMs and their accuracy towards something that is very specific to Kubernetes. Um, so yeah, hopefully, Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City, Easter eggs, we don't know. Uh, but, 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 but the point is how you can have some sort of a reinforcement learning where one LLM still uh, teaches the other LLM on how to fix a problem very well. I don't know, Salt Lake City, Easter eggs, let's see. <laughs> With that, we come to an end. Uh, thank you so much for attending, and we are up for questions now. One last thing. Um, LLM Netties is open source, so if you want to read the code, if you want to play with it, if you want to contribute, if you want to deploy it uh, in the cluster, please go ahead and do it. Uh, we also like uh, taking PRs. Thank you, Vox. Sounds good. Uh, we have, I see one question over there. You, you got a mic. Uh, I see a couple of questions over here. OK, I have a couple of questions. Uh, the first is, uh, do you plan to implement Bedrock as backend? Uh, sorry, I didn't get that. Do, Do you plan, plan to implement uh, Bedrock uh, as backend? Uh, we, we don't have bedrock, bedrock on our roadmap as of now, but that's surely something we can uh, think about. So if, if you would be open to it, you can create a, uh, an issue on our repository. It's LLMnetis slash LLMnetis. Thank you. And the second question is, uh, do you plan to propose this as a sandbox project? That's something uh, we, we've been thinking about. So we've been looking for like more contributors who can come and contribute to this project, and then we can build it to a level where we can donate it to CNCF as a sandbox project. Thanks for your questions. Thank you. Uh, so it's not deterministic. It's resource intensive. Uh, it sometimes can give you wrong, not wrong, but destructive answers and lead, lead you in a, wrong, in a evil, evil path. To whom it might be useful at the moment? To the Kubernetes expert? To someone who is novice and you know might try to do something that he didn't think of? So uh, I, I would say this is uh, useful to everyone. It cuts across the domain, wherein someone who's early in their career wants to play with this, they can try to see what Kubernetes gen uh, configuration looks like, or want to play with AI. This can be a useful task for them. The other one could be like uh, SREs or cluster admins or people who actually work with their clusters day long. Uh, what it means to uh, simplify their cluster operations, what it means to make this better. We're not saying use it as is, but what are the challenges over here? This is more of a futuristic use case. As you mentioned, it's resource utens uh, uh, utensive today, but we don't know how it's going to turn out in maybe a year or two. So we're still forming, we're making, we're making sure that the road is built, and then we can you know, run faster over it. But thanks for that question. Um, uh, hello. I'll add, I'll add just one thing. So regarding cluster upgrades, we know that it's something we do not advise to use. However, for uh, chaos simulation, we think it's a great tool to use. Like you want to break your cluster in spectacular ways. Maybe you don't think about like some edge case that the LLM is going to see. So maybe for deterministic tasks, you don't want to use it. But for chaos simulation, uh, why not? I think we, we're going to bet maybe more on that, on that route in the future. Right now, we just look more exploring all the areas and see, see what's the output and, and presenting that. True, but finding real use cases for it now 
is, is great, it's exciting, yeah, like chaos engineering. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I see a couple of questions from here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So first of all, thank you guys for the presentation. And uh, I just have a question about uh, two things. Uh, when I hear term AI, I expect a lot from that. So when you are talking about this cluster upgrades that your LLM thing will really help us out for smooth cluster upgrades. So how this is different from the other solutions out there? For an example, you're working with AWS EKS, and EKS already introduced a very good feature like upgrade insights. And now you really see things on the UI that, OK, these are the deprecated APIs, and you can just uh, ign uh, check there if it is if it is allowed to upgrade or not so first thing is that that how this is how this llm is useful there and we should ignore other solutions another thing is uh, when you are showing that the storage uh, demo you said the pod was pending uh, does uh, this llm will help us out to identify the root cause or this will be just a normal message like okay there are three or four options which you can check and definitely in my opinion you can check that like the storage class is there or etc whether this llm will uh, exactly point you out that okay this is the problem in your cluster and you just need to change it it can be anything yeah so that's it i'll i'll take question 1 you take question 2 so for question one, um, fun fact, I worked on the cluster upgrade feature on, on EKS. Um, <laughs> I would say something. Uh, LLM is fun. It's not something I would use in production. Uh, in EKS, behind the scenes, uh, we, we have a deterministic system that cannot make a mistake, theoretically speaking. If it executes, it's going to tell you whether something is deprecated or not. And that's what you need for a production um, system. If, however, if you're playing with an EKS cluster or a kind cluster, I'm like, go ahead and play with the LMNITs. But don't do that for, for production clusters. Yeah, thanks for that. And to answer your second question, um, it's, it's, it's actually what, uh, it's exactly what you mentioned, wherein it's not just telling you that these are the things you can try, but actually auditing your cluster for actual problems and then giving you actionable next steps. Right? Like These are the things that you can do, and not, some, not just analyzing it uh, from a from an um, if-else perspective, but actually uh, taking data from your cluster and then auditing it, right? Does that make sense? Sounds good. Um, I think we can take much more questions in the hallway, and we should be good for now. But thank you, thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you all. If you see us in the hallway, please like stop us. We're super happy to, to chat about this. Yeah, and we'll be in the hallway. Thank you so much.